hi guys <clears throat> welcome back to the channel today we'll be diving into something super important but often overlooked web accessibility in just about seven minutes i'll explain what accessibility means why it matters and show you real coding examples to make your website more inclusive let's go so before you start um we need to have a basic understanding of html css javascript uh, but this episode is not about that i would just give a brief introduction as to what this series is about so what is web accessibility this is basically making your web content usable by everyone including people with disabilities like visual impairments motor challenges or cognitive differences it's not just a nice to have it's essential for inclusive design and in many regions it's a legal requirement even in the uk let's start by giving some basic coding examples so here i have a simple html page that just has welcome to accessibility tutorial which we have here html is like a skeleton what you write is what you see a simple example is having an image tag so this is bad so i could have something like this i'll just add a comment here this is bad and the reason why this is bad is because if i this image doesn't exist currently in my folder meaning if i come here all I get to see is just this. I don't get to see what it is. I don't get to see what the image is about. All I just see is an empty image. Now, this is where accessibility comes into play because someone that doesn't have an idea of what that image means or is or can't see the image won't have an idea of what it is. Now, this is where accessibility comes into play. Now, what you are supposed to do is when given an image, and it doesn't exist we have a property called alt so we could say our company seems standing together at the annual retreat i'll just put a comment saying this is good now if you look at the first image there is nothing but the second one because it doesn't exist we get to see a text saying our company team standing together at the annual retreat meaning if someone that has virtual impairment comes into this site and is scrolling through it using a screen reader because the person can't see it what the person hears is our company team standing together at the annual retreat this is an image do you now see the difference as to why this is bad and this is good. Another example we can give is a simple anchor tag, a href. So for instance, I could have something like httpsgoogle.com and a typical website will have something like this. Click me. Now, this is bad and the reason why this is bad is because this just says click me it doesn't it's not descriptive there's nothing you know to tell me what this is doing and you get to see a lot of websites that has just click me click me view me what do they actually mean this is where accessibility comes into play again now what you are supposed to have is you are supposed to have i will just copy paste this and say this is good what you are supposed to have is you are supposed to be more explicit you could say go to google now with this this tells you now look at click me click me to do what go to google this is more explanatory saying this takes me to google websites you can see it's an anchor tag but it takes me somewhere this is a simple example as to how accessibility comes into play. Another one I would like to touch base on is forms. 
and how forms are a big pain point for accessibility. Every input in form should have a label and every label and input should be tied together with a for an ID. Now what I basically mean is if you have an input for instance you can't just say you can't leave an input as this it's not accessible at all because what is this for it doesn't tell the user what it is for so this is bad now how you are supposed to do this is as i said every input should have a label meaning we should have a label here that says for instance email address Is this still good? Not necessarily. We need to be able to say this label is for this input and the way to do that is to use for. So we could say for user email and here we would have id user email and this is a type of email as well. So what this is basically doing is we are saying this label is for this input. This makes it accessible. This makes the user or whoever is reading it says this email address is for this particular input. Sometimes HTML isn't enough and that is, you know, a fact. That's where ARIA comes into play, um, accessible rich internet applications. Um, if you want to build some custom, um, what's it called, um, attributes like um, drop down you know you could use aria um so just to give again i was i'm going to make this short because this is also going to be a lesson on accessibility i'm going to create a playlist on accessibility Quick recap use alt text for images write descriptive links ensure full keyboard access use proper labels and forms maintain good contrast and use area carefully for custom elements i'll touch area in a more lengthy video accessibility isn't just for people with disabilities always know that it helps everyone faster navigation better seo and future proof design if this helped you in any way please give this video a like subscribe for more dev tips and comments below if you want a full tutorial on area rules screen reader testing or building accessible components from scratch thanks for watching and let's build a better web one accessible site at a time. Thanks, guys.